What's up my fellow programmers, hope you guys are doing well. In this video, we are going to go to the roadmap of becoming a full stack developer in 2023. But first, what is a full stack developer? A full stack developer is a person or a developer who builds both the client side and the server side of an application. So what do I mean by client side application? Client side means what the user will see. So when I visit a website, or whatever you see on the website, like for example, if you go to universalbreak.com or rianapi.com, which is my portfolio, you won't see in front end. So that is the client side of an application. And the server side of an application is defined as whatever backend logic that we have. Like take uh, the WrestleBreak for example, it's an app where, where you can get wrestling news feed uh, like from multiple sources. So whatever logic I've written to get the data from my database to the client side is in the server side. So that is the difference between the client side and the server side. In layman's terms, you can think of it as the client side being the front end, whatever the user sees, the back end, whatever uh, Chrome browser will see or what you can't see. So that's the old idea of a full stack developer. So how does one become a full stack developer in 2023? If you're just starting out, I've set up a roadmap that you can that you guys can follow so you guys have a starting point because I remember when I was starting out I did not know where to start or what to start learning with. So first of all if uh, I would recommend you guys to start from the front end because that is much easier. Uh, for you guys to start uh, you know learning and you know earning as well so to become a front-end developer uh, you would have to start with html ess and javascript and uh, this is just the basics you don't need to get every single thing like down uh, you don't have to learn every single html tag you don't have to learn every css property you just have to get the basics down just so that you can start building stuff same goes with javascript as well because when i was starting out i just went through basics like uh, mike dane has a course which i'll link in the description uh, where he just goes through the basics of javascript that is what i learned when i was starting out and to learn HTML and css there are awesome tutorials available on recodecamp and uh, Mike Dean's channel as well. So, what what should you do once you've learned these three things? Uh, then you know comes uh, the time to learn frameworks. Now, frameworks that makes your development process very easy. Like for example, React.js is one of the highest used JavaScript libraries available out there. I personally myself use React.js and React Native to develop web and mobile apps. So you guys can also start learning that, but there are a lot of JavaScript frameworks available out there. You guys can learn Swedit, AngularJS, Vue.js, and there are a lot more coming up uh, like every day. So uh, you guys can start with whatever you want, but uh, if you guys want to learn React.js like I did, there is, a, there is an awesome website called Scrimba, and they have uh, a free react course i made it but there and uh, so that is like just the basics of how you can start to become a front-end developer now this should take you probably around six months now the second thing that comes is the back end now we have mastered the front end now comes the time to start with the back end development uh now with back end if you are like using javascript and you are already familiar with it i would highly recommend you guys to start uh, using Node.js, uh, but there are other uh, languages available like PHP, C Sharp, you guys can use C++ as well. Uh, but I've never used frameworks. Now, there are a lot of frameworks available. So, so for example, if you're using JavaScript, there is Express.js. And for PHP, you guys can, uh, like, there are a lot of frameworks available for using PHP, like Code Igniter. Uh, there's a lot of uh, and same goes with other as well like with c sharp we have esp.net so you guys can start learning whatever you feel comfortable with yeah so there are two kinds of databases one is NoSQL and the other one is sql and it's known as structured query language and the thing with sql is uh, is that uh, 
it has simulation so you would have to learn like uh, if you are using SQL databases you would have to learn like uh, what is one to one what is one to many what is many to many relation and that would really help you you know structure your database but if you're using uh, new SQL like for example MongoDB uh, you won't have to worry about learning the relations it's good to know because there is still a, like uh, like the same concept being used there but there's no structure to it uh, but in the case of SQL or SQL uh, there is structure to the databases so it depends on what uh, your preferences and what are the demands of the project that is it everyone hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, so uh, all the links and all the resources that I've mentioned will be in a blog that I've written for you guys so that uh, you guys can find it easily so if you're interested in finding out the resources and stuff you guys can check out the link in the description and that is it for now so do uh, so do not forget to like subscribe and share the video with your friends whoever you think like might need this information and uh, would love to hear what you guys think uh, in the comments below what I can improve on and what you guys would like to see from me uh, now I do have uh, like some plans of uh, working on a blockchain uh, course but uh, I'm not sure like should I build a project or should it be like a structured validity course or like how to set it up and stuff so I would love to hear from you guys like uh, what courses would you like to see first and uh, that is it so bye